Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 11th of February. Aam Admi Party set for a third term in Indian capital. Disharmony reason for crackdown on Pashtuns in Pakistan, says nuclear scientist. And suicide bombing kills at least six in Afghan capital, Kabul. And now for all the details, Arvind Kejriwal is set to return as the Chief Minister for the third time in India's capital, New Delhi. His Aam Admi Party was leading in the bitterly contested Assembly election, racing ahead of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party. The Congress Party, which ruled Delhi for 15 years before being voted out in 2013, drew a blank. Celebrations broke out at the headquarters of Indian capital New Delhi's ruling Aam Aadmi Party or AAP as election commission's trends indicated a landslide victory for Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal led party. Aam Aadmi Party Chief Arvind Kejriwal expressed his gratitude towards the people of Delhi and said that this is the victory of the people who consider him as their son. Making his first public appearance after the day's results, Kejriwal made a brief address to supporters in which he thanked them, outlined his personal connection with citizens and party workers, as well as credited his family for their continued support. जिसने मुझे अपना बेटा समझ के, जिन्होंने मुझे अपना बेटा मान के हमें जबरदस्त समर्थन दिया, इतना वोट दिया। Meanwhile, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party or BJP was reduced to single digit in 70-member Delhi Assembly till 5 p.m. local time. Delhi BJP Chief Manoj Tiwari said he accepts the mandate of people of Delhi and congratulated K. Jival. He hoped K. Jival performs well as per the expectations of the people. The Congress party, which ruled Delhi for 15 years before being voted in 2013, drew a blank. At least three Pakistani terrorists were killed in Indian retaliation over the past weekend across the line of control in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Indian troops have been effectively responding to Pakistan Army's ceasefire violations along the border going on for the last few days. Three Pakistani terrorists were killed in retaliatory firing over the past weekend by Indian troops across the line of control in Mendhar sector of northern Jammu and Kashmir region. Indian Army sources have said. The Indian Army has been responding to ceasefire violations by Pakistani troops along the frontier over the past few days. Meanwhile, residents of Poonch district of Jammu and Kashmir have expressed fear as Pakistan has also been firing shells while targeting residential areas for days now. <laughs> इस चीज का गवर्नमेंट पाकिस्तान को कोई जवाब दे ताकि ये बस्ती के ऊपर तो रियायत हो जाए कुछ नहीं देखते आगे आगे पीछे गरीब लोग हैं गरीब बस्ती है ये वो तो देखो कहां से कहां आया गोला इधर इंडिया हैज लॉन्ग एक्यूज नेबरिंग पाकिस्तान ऑफ इनफिल्ट्रेटिंग टेररिस्ट ड्यूरिंग सीज फायर वायलेशंस टू माउंट अटैक्स ऑन इंडियन सोइल पाकिस्तान हाउएवर डिनाइज द एलिगेशंस Renowned Pakistani nuclear physicist Perez Hudboy has blamed disharmony in his country for the freedom movement in Balochistan and the reason for the controversial arrest of Pashtun Tahafuz movement, Chief Manzoor Pashtin. He said Pakistan is in a state of confusion because it was born in a state of confusion. Perez Hudboy, a prominent nuclear physicist, has blamed disharmony in his country 
for the freedom movement in Balochistan and the reason for the controversial arrest of Pashtun Tahafuz movement chief Manzoor Pashtin. Speaking during a literary fest in Karachi, Hoodboy criticized his country's government and said that normal countries worked for the betterment of their citizens and Pakistan needed to become a normal country. He said Pakistan is in a state of confusion because it was born in a state of confusion, criticizing the two-nation theory proposed by Pakistan's founder Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Now, if Muslims could always live in peace together, you would not have the separatist movement in Balochistan, which again nobody is allowed to mention, you would not have the you would not have Manzoor Pashtin arrested and all the PTM leadership arrested today. Hoodboy's comments assume significance as Pashtun across the country and worldwide have been holding rallies to demand the release of Pashtun activist Manzoor Pashtin, who was arrested last month over sedition charges. Members of Pashtun and the Baloch minorities have long blamed that they have been targets of military operations, ethnic stereotyping and abductions by the Pakistani state and its security forces. Moving on, locals in the illegally occupied region of Pakistan administered Kashmir have expressed anger over rising inflation and unjust taxes owing to Islamabad's incompetent policies. They blamed the economic losses faced by Pakistan due to policy paralysis are compensated from regions under its illegal control. People in Pakistan administered Kashmir are facing immense difficulties due to the consistent increase in inflation. While Pakistan has been witnessing economic challenges in recent days owing to its incompetent policies, this occupied region which is already marginalized has borne the major brunt of unfair taxes and high inflation. A sharp rise in the fuel, food and transportation costs have severely hit the domestic budgets of people in the region. <laughs> Locals have accused there has been no progress when it comes to employment and development of the region. However, they continue to be subjected to hardships. The economic losses being faced by Pakistan due to policy paralysis are compensated from region under its illegal control. A sudden escalation in the prices is just one aspect of its exploitative design. In news from Afghanistan, at least six people, including four security personnel and two civilians, were killed in a suicide bomb attack in Afghan capital Kabul on Tuesday. No group, including the Taliban, had claimed responsibility for the blast till the last reports came in. A suicide bomber detonated his explosives near a military academy in the Afghan capital Kabul on Tuesday, killing at least six people and wounding 12. The attack took place near the entrance to the government-run Defence University, the Marshal Fahim Military Academy, at the beginning of the morning rush hour. Afghan Interior Ministry spokesman Nasrat Rahimi in a tweet confirmed that the deceased included two civilians and four personnel of Afghan National Defence and Security Forces, or ANDSF. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for the attack. Militant attacks on the Afghan and US-led security forces have continued over recent months even as the United States and the Taliban militant group pursue talks to finalize a peace pact. The military academy has been the scene of several attacks in the past, including an Islamic State claimed assault last May. 
The reconstruction of Afghanistan has cost hundreds of lives, according to a new report released by a U.S. government watchdog. The findings come in the midst of renewed U.S.-led peace talks with the Taliban to pave the way for the withdrawal of U.S. troops. The reconstruction of Afghanistan has cost hundreds of lives, according to a new report released last week by a U.S. government watchdog. The Special Inspector General for Afghan Reconstruction, or SIGAR, John F. Sopko, says his report is the first to look at the human cost for the reconstruction of Afghanistan after the U.S.-led invasion in 2001 that brought down the Taliban. The casualties it made were the result of Taliban and other militant attacks on reconstruction projects since 2002. For years, SIGAR has made significant efforts to track the financial cost of reconstruction and stabilization activities in Afghanistan, Sopko said in the report's preamble. The report found that 2,214 people have been killed, most of them Afghans, in largely US-led projects to rebuild the country. SIGAR also said 1,182 people were either abducted or disappeared while on reconstruction jobs. The report didn't say how many among the kidnapped had been recovered. The findings come in the midst of renewed U.S.-led peace talks with the Taliban to pave the way for withdrawal of its troops from Afghanistan. The Taliban has stalled about agreeing how to end or significantly reduce hostilities. A reduction in violence would allow two parties to sign a definitive agreement, paving the way for ending America's longest war in Afghanistan. As an eloquent testimony to the success of beach cleaning program by the Sri Lanka Navy, several sea turtle eggs were found at a beach in capital Colombo. The naval personnel encircled the area, giving the eggs a protected hatching ground. After the incubation period, the hatchlings broke open the shell and were later released into the sea. Sri Lankan Navy has been instrumental in bringing about initiatives for the conservation of sea turtles which have been classified as threatened or endangered species. Starting a new chapter in the Navy's turtle conservation project, a bale of sea turtle hatchlings emerged from the turtle conservation site at the Gulf Face Beach near capital Colombo. These turtles were conserved by the Navy after the turtle eggs were found from the area. Several small turtles have been incubated and released to the sea till now. As a result of the Navy's effort, the beach area has been turned into a pleasant destination for both local and foreign tourists. The cleaning of Gulf Face Beach commenced with a renewed vigour by the Green and Blue Initiative, mooted by Commander of the Navy, Vice Admiral Pial de Silva. One of the most expensive affairs in India are marriages, which are supposed to be grand. However, not everyone is privileged enough to arrange it this way. To reduce the financial burden on the guardians of brides, a mass ceremony was organized in western Gujarat province where over a thousand couples got married recently. As many as 1,100 couples, including both Hindus and Muslims, got married in a mass wedding ceremony in India's western Gujarat province recently. The couples at the grand event performed different rituals according to their religions and seemed happy with the initiative. The event was organized by a public trust, which also presented the newlyweds with gifts like box bed, refrigerator, cupboards and sewing machines which are deemed basic necessities for the beginning of a new life. Non-government organizations, trusts and business tycoons in India have been funding mass weddings for women from financially weaker sections of the society for years now. Such ceremonies have now become a popular tradition as these help to reduce the financial burden on the parents or guardians of the brides. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.